Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very last devotion in our series, Lessons from Lockdown. Now, I want to show you a photo of the cutest baby you have ever seen. Yep, you guessed it. That is me on my first birthday, the same year that man discovered fire. Just kidding. I'm 33 years old today, and I have two daughters of my own, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And just the other day, my six-year-old daughter lost her first tooth. On Thursday morning, I sat with her and watched her say these words, d a g dog p e n pen I cannot believe that my little baby is learning to read. You see, in the same way that my mom tells me that it felt like yesterday when she took that photo of me, it felt like yesterday when I carried my brand new baby out of the hospital to the car for our trip home. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm realizing that time flies. Life is flying by, going past us quicker than we think. Maybe some of you guys don't feel like that way. You've been stuck at home for three months and it's been boring with lockdown. But that's not the reality. The reality is that things are moving quickly. And before we know it, we'll be at the end of our lives, ready to leave this earth. Before I know it, my 33-year-old daughter will be commenting on her child learning to read. In Matthew 25, we read a really interesting parable about a wealthy master who goes on a journey, but before he leaves, he entrusts his wealth to his three servants. To the first servant, he gives five talents or five bags of gold. To the second servant, he gives two talents or two bags of gold. And to the third, he gives one bag of gold. Upon his return, he approaches his servants to find out what they did with the money that he had entrusted to them. The first servant tells the master that he had invested those five bags of gold and produced a return of five more. Well done, good and faithful servant, the master says to him. The second servant explains to the master that he also put the money to work, investing those two bags and making a return of two more. Well done, good and faithful servant, he is told. But the third servant did not invest the one talent that he was given. Instead, he buried it in the ground and did not put it to work. And this is what the master has to say to him. You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. One of my biggest fears, guys, is that at the end of my life, I stand before God and I look back and I realize that I wasted my life, that I did not put to work the gifts and talents that God has given me, that I live for myself, trying to secure a happy future, trying to make money, trying to impress people in my comfortable little bubble, not loving God, not serving him, not loving people, not serving them, not making a difference in this life. That God had entrusted so much to me, but that I wasted it all. So how do time and talents relate to the coronavirus? Well, I think back to February. We were coasting along. Life was going well. I mean, we were kind of going along merrily, and then boom, the virus hits, flips the world upside down. People are losing their jobs. People are dying, and the trajectory of our lives is forever changed because of this global pandemic. I guess I'm just asking the question, what if I don't have a lot of time? What if I arrogantly thought that You know, things would go according to my plans, neatly kind of packaged in this little box, when actually today could be my last. 
And then I'm asking myself this question. Have I used what God has given me in the time that he has given me? I have to wonder when, whether I've been, been living my life like the two or the five talent servant who, who put to work what God had given them, or what the master had given them, or whether I've been living like the one talent servant who didn't think it was important to put to use what the master had entrusted him. Have I wasted my time being selfish, trying to secure a future for myself? Or have I lived for God and others? Have I invested my time getting to know God? Have I served him well? Have I served people? Have I told people about the only hope that is to be found in Jesus Christ, the God man who offers forgiveness and who offers to satisfy the deepest needs of the human heart? Have I been a good and faithful servant? Maybe things never go back to normal. Maybe they do. I don't know. But what I do know is that I have been given the gift of today. I've been given, I've been given breath in my lungs. I've been given two arms and two legs. I've been given a voice. I've been given a brain. I've been given gifts. And as a Christian, I've been given God's own spirit living inside of me, empowering me to live a life that looks like that of Christ's. I have everything I need to make a difference. I best not waste it. You know, I'm also asking this question. Do I really need to be a five talent person to make a difference in this world? Because sometimes we say things like, I'm not very gifted. I'm not that special. I don't have a lot. I'm, I'm too young. I'm too scared up. Scared. I'm too messed up to be used by God in a significant way. But it's interesting because in the parable, the master was not more pleased with the servant who'd been given five talents than with the servant who'd been, who'd been given two. In fact, he commends both of them for putting the wealth to work. He wasn't interested in how much they were given. He was interested in what they did with what they were given. He was not interested in giftedness. He was interested in faithfulness. You don't need to change the world. You don't need to be famous. You need to be faithful. Every moment in your life, every moment in your day is an opportunity to be faithful and to serve God with what he has given you. Every day, God sends people across your path, whether it's family members or strangers, people that he calls you to love and serve, people that we can serve and love and make a difference in their lives. So my hope as you watch this, my hope for you for today is that the first thing you do is that you go and you be still before God and you allow God to speak to you around this truth. You ask yourself the questions whether you're using what he's given you. And my hope is that as you do that, God moves you, not to a place of serving him out of fear, but moves you to a place where you realize how loved you are by him, how much he's given you. And therefore out of that place that you go with a heart full of love to love God and to love others well. In his book, Don't Waste Your Life, author John Piper says these words, and I pray they stick with you. Remember, you have one life. That's all. You were made for God. Don't waste it. Well, that brings us to the end of our series, Lessons from lockdown, I really hope that you guys have been blessed by what our leaders have had to share, things that God has been teaching them over the season. Please go back and watch them again if they've been an encouragement to you. And I'm really looking forward to our next series, which will start next week, Tuesday. And that is on spiritual growth. How, what do we do when we feel stuck as Christians? And it's a series called Stuck in the Mud, and I'm really excited 
for it. God bless you guys. Love you. And we'll catch you next week, Tuesday.